that you should always take care of. And of course, during the time of COVID-19, during the past week, that is in 2020, most people ended up uh, shifting their business to online. So that means that we are all on our screens. How healthy was that? And what can you do differently? And if you're in a position whereby you feel that mambo uh, yendi sour when it comes to your eyes, this is a conversation that you should stick around for. In studio, I'm joined with Rosalind Kilonzo. She is an expansion manager for Liper East Africa. We'll be looking at uh, 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 venture when it comes to eyewear. Yes, eyewear business venture. So stay locked, remember, across all the social media handles, that is at Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira is why you can find me across all my social. Rosalind Kilanza, thank you for creating time to be with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, I don't mention your title. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go uh, deep to understanding who Rosalind Kilonzo, who she is, what she does in details, where she was born and, bre and bred. So let's start from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, a good place to start. Yes. Um, yeah, Rosalind Kilonzo, uh, expansion manager for La Pea, uh, uh, La Pea East Africa, mm -hmm. basically. Um, my job at La Pea involves uh, expanding to new territories, opening up new stores, new, new, new locations. Um, so far, I have led the expansion into Uganda. We have um, uh, five branches now in Uganda, and we have three branches in Kenya, uh, and we'll be doing more uh, expansion within the year, opening more branches all across uh, mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm. Uh, born, <laughs> I was born in Kitui. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's a place to start. I was born in Kitui. I went to University of Nairobi School of Business. Mm -hmm. uh, and I joined La Pea immediately out of college. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, so at what particular point did you get into the, uh, the eyewear business space right. in your whole life journey? Uh, that's actually a good question. Um, actually, so growing up, um, one of my relatives, my great grandma, um, she had diabetes, or at least what we came to learn was diabetes a bit later on. So she lost her vision um, too early, mm -hmm. um, if I may say that. And so uh, when I was in college, I came across La Pea mm -hmm. um, through, through a function that they were doing in our school. And I was intrigued by what they were doing, by what they were offering, um, offering the, the free eye test for people who needed it, um, free consultation for people who did not know much about their eyes and they wanted to learn, um, and affordable eyeglasses. And that's how I got into the eye care business because um, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know more because um, some of these problems can be genetic and uh, I just wanted to know if it gets to that point, what do I need to do? If it's me or if it's another member of my family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then that's when the whole journey began. That's when the whole journey began, basically, yeah. All right. Most people shy away, especially when there's this open uh, open air of free uh, medical checkups. Yes. They feel it's a scam or some, something of the sort yeah. and they shy away from that. What would you say from that perspective? Right. Um, I mean, I do understand where they're coming from because um, well, people don't trust free things, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to remember, uh, you know, what you, you what you want for yourself. Um, if you want to be educated about your eyes, if you want to know more about your health, um, it's good to take to take advantage of these opportunities when they come up. Mm -hmm. uh, when you hear of uh, free, you know, cervical cancer screening, free pap smears, um, we go for these things because we know that they're important to us. So why not take advantage of a free eye checkup? Uh, when you know because eyes are very important mm -hmm. you know um, they're the window to the soul and uh, if you have that opportunity to get your eyes screened for free be advised by a professional on what you need to do so what are the eye care tips that you need to follow um, I think it's important that we take advantage of it so for anyone who's watching us and uh, they feel like you know there's this people have different conditions when it comes to the eyes, not even getting into the medical uh, aspect even yeah. first start because, you know, medical experts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what are a couple of uh, the wrong things that we do when it comes to just getting the proper eyewear or what is the, the right procedure just to identify that this particular eyeglass 
it goes for me. Right. Um, so something that uh, people really shouldn't do is buying eyeglasses off the counter. Um, <laughs> we, we do that exactly. all the time. <laughs> that happens a lot, especially for people who need like reading glasses. Oh, they just go by the street. You oh, find yes. some magnifying we, glasses. This is the conversation that yeah. is there. But yeah. we tell, this is for short-sighted. This yeah. is for... Uh, people who care. It's short-sighted and long-sighted. Long -sighted, long -sighted. Yeah. So uh, I feel like I'm short-sighted, so I can see fat. So they yeah, yeah, so here you so go. That you is wrong. <laughs> that is wrong. That okay. is really wrong. Because um, if you end up with a prescription that is not meant for you, whether it's too low or it's too high, um, it could actually cause problems um, eventually with your eyes. Mm -hmm. So buying glasses off the counter without actually having done a checkup and understanding the kind of prescription that you need mm -hmm. is wrong. It's not good. You need to go see a doctor, you need to see an optometrist, an optician, an ophthalmologist to mm -hmm. do an eye checkup first um, to, to assess like the kind of prescription that you need for your glasses to give you something that is perfect for you that is going to help you see far without straining your eyes mm -hmm. um, too much. Mm -hmm. So that's something that people really shouldn't do, buying prescription glasses off the counter. It's not right. Um, the other thing, there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, people who wear eyeglasses. Uh, there's a misconception that, oh, they are sick or they are old. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that go on about people who wear glasses. Um, but what I can say is that you don't have to wear glasses just because you're sick. Mm -hmm. Some people wear glasses for, pre you know, for preventive measures. For people who use computers, for example, for long hours, they're exposed a lot to, uh, you know, the blue light coming off the screens. And so mm -hmm. they wear glasses, blue light blocking lenses to help them be able to work comfortably on their computers for long hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's not just because you're sick. You know, you could have like really good vision or normal vision, um, but you use your computer a lot or you you are sensitive to light, sunlight, for example, and so you need glasses to help you with that mm -hmm. problem. Is it something if someone uh, is trying to just protect their eyes from dust, would you go for glasses? Uh, it's one way mm -hmm. to go about it. Um, <coughs> uh, it's one way to go about it if you have a dust allergy. <laughs> yes, because yes. like there are a couple of growth that actually develop from uh, dust allergies as yes. well. Yes, yes, yeah. No, yeah, like I said, it's one way to go about it. Okay. But the best uh, way, again, I'll go back to mm -hmm. consult your eye care uh, professional. Yes, you don't know. just sit and exactly. just assume, don't just, exactly. by the way, yeah. <laughs> what I'm feeling is because of the dust. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Because of the sun, just it could be something like there's so many, uh, you know, symptoms, you know, that occur in the eye, uh, especially for allergies. You might think it's one allergy, well, it's the other. So the best thing is just to see um, an eye care professional mm -hmm. to get proper advice. I'm speaking about uh, seeking uh, an eye profession who is the right one, because mm -hmm. there's so many medical centers that are opened up, and of course, uh, with our economy, finances are also a key issue. But of course, health should be uh, a priority but yeah. how to identify that the the right uh, eye care to go to what are the couple of things that maybe you can mention being in the in the industry that you can actually uh, put the aspect of credibility that if this is the institution what to look out for when it, when it comes to just a surety that I am going for um, you know the right eye center place to just you know get me checked up get the correct eyeglasses Right. Um, I believe it's about the person who is doing the test. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of apprenticeship situations that happen a lot um, where someone who does not necessarily have background, um, you know, in in eye care, they kind of just get trained and they know how to do the test and they can, you know, they can do the test and prescribe the glasses to you. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be able to know who is doing your check up, mm -hmm. right? Is it uh, a professionally trained optometrist, uh, an ophthalmologist, like who is doing the checkup? I think that's where you start because you want the person who is dealing with your eyes to be a professional and to know what they're doing right. and to be able to assess, to, uh, you know, help with whatever problem it is that mm -hmm. you have. Being the eyes. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. So when it comes to uh, uh, the company that you work with, Lipia East Africa, uh, take us through in details what you guys do right. and uh, the services that you provide. Good. Um, so La Pea Group, basically, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, we have presence not just in, in East Africa, but also yes. in West Africa, mm -hmm. in about seven different countries mm -hmm. um, in Africa. And so what we offer, because we believe everyone should be able to see well, we believe everyone should have um, access to affordable eye care, and that's what we offer. So we conduct uh, free vision tests 
uh, that means the eye checkup. We mm -hmm. conduct it for free. And anyone who need glasses, they can get them from us, starting from Kenya Shillings, the 3,400. Right? So 3,400 in this case would cover um, the frame and the prescription with anti glare lenses. Right? Um, and that is a full package. So for 3,400, you have yourself a full package. If you're suffering before 3,400, you're good, mm -hmm. you're sorted. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing we offer as well uh, is free delivery around Nairobi, and we offer flexible payments, mm -hmm. Lipa Mdogo Mdogo. Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the biggest problems um, that people have at the moment in, in terms of access to eye care is that it, it's expensive. So we take away the consultation fee by doing the free vision test okay. and we offer the flexible payments uh, which means someone can still have good eye care while they're paying, you know, in uh, small installments for mm -hmm. their glasses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh, for someone who's watching this conversation and they want to, let's look at the business side of it now. Right. <laughs> so uh, they want to start their own eyeglass, pro probably a prescription business or eye eyewear business. Mm -hmm. What is the ways to go around it? Right. <laughs> um, you'll this have, is, you'll so help Lapia uh, to expand uh, <laughs> for anyone who wants to get into the eyewear business. Right. Uh, probably just take the same journey that you guys are taking. Uh, what would be the, like uh, on the drawing board? Right. How would it look like? Starting okay. at that um, kind of a the business? first thing you need to do is understand your target market. Mm -hmm. Right. You need to understand who are you targeting because. Um, as in other, any other industry, basically, there's different uh, levels of the sort of the people you target. It can be the low income earners, the middle income earners, high end, you know, you know, high uh, level income earners, and so on. So you have to understand the, what what audience are you targeting, mm -hmm. and then from that you'll make sure that you are offering a product that is. Um, that will interest your target audience. Because mm -hmm. so, so, there's no way you're going to say that you're targeting low and middle income earners mm -hmm. while you're offering glasses for 30,000 or 50,000. No one is going to buy that. That's right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to understand your target audience and then offer them a product that they will appreciate, mm -hmm. that adds value into their life. Yeah. Ah, what's the yes. marketing strategy to increase in sales? Marketing strategy to increase on sales. In this particular industry. <laughs> well, the good thing with Lapa is we target pretty much everyone uh -huh. because our glasses are really affordable. So mm -hmm. everyone over the age of 10 um, is a customer to us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we do is um, ensure that we're reaching out to these people, mm -hmm. our potential customers, uh, through all different channels. We have very active digital um, advertising <coughs> um, platform. Uh, we do a lot of our, you know, advertising online, so, so our customers through social media, through our websites. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're also doing a lot of offline actions. Um, we are currently in the process of organizing um, community talks mm -hmm. where we go to people, groups of people. Uh, it's more of an educative uh, platform where we inform them about their eyes, uh, what are some of the common eye problems, what are um, the symptoms, how to address them, and so on. Right. Do you yeah. think it's a challenge when it comes to the young people wearing glasses? Because uh, they, I feel like there's a stigma yeah. for, uh, for a young person to just being recognized as person A who has eye problems, yeah, and it. you can ruin your self-esteem. Do you guys do like a design uh, for? Um, there's a time that um, I was having a conversation with uh, a lady, and uh, I all this time. Uh, she's a colleague all the same. Right. I thought she had, uh, uh, like it was a fashion kind of thing. Right, but yeah. she ended up telling me that it's actually uh, prescription glasses. Prescription glasses. Yeah. Yeah. So is it a way that it can be, you know, different eyewear that can be designed to fit young people so that they can feel, you know, conf confident that yeah. just getting rid of the stigma of the idea right. that... Um, I mean... People are becoming really innovative uh -huh. with um, the styles and the shapes of frames. Mm -hmm. um, and like the example that you just gave, it's possible that someone has been wearing glasses, someone you live has been wearing glasses, mm -hmm. um, but you, you do not know whether they're prescription glasses because of the, the type of frame that they have, the shape of the frame that they have. So it's becoming more and more um, fashionable as yes, time yes, goes yes. by. So, um, and we, we have a wide collection of, you know, frames at La Pair. Oh. Some of the frames, uh, you know, like 
like you say, you might wear them and you, you won't know if this person is actually wearing them for fashion or actually mm -hmm. suffers from eye problems. Mm -hmm. So, um, all I can say is that yeah, the, the designs of the frames are growing. Um, there is that stigma that you mentioned earlier um, among young people. But I think as time goes by, people are also learning um, and, and being informed more about eyes and understanding that this person is not, not wearing that just to show off or something like that. It's actually mm -hmm. because they have an actual problem. For students, for example, in high school, in colleges, uh, universities, they might, um, it actually affects your studies if your vision is not good. Mm -hmm. Like you could actually see a, a a student who is performing lower, not because they're not getting what's happening in class, but mm -hmm. it's because their vision is reduced and therefore it's affecting um, their learning. All right, so what kind of lenses coating do sh should one go for? Lens coatings. Yeah. So there's different types of lens coatings and it usually depends on the kind of problem that someone has. Mm -hmm. The first lens coating is anti-glare. Mm -hmm. um, it's an anti-glare coating. So uh, with anti-glare basically it helps reduce um, reflections on surfaces um, and usually for people who use computers, not for long periods of time, mm -hmm. um, but they can help with reducing that glare from your computer screen mm -hmm. uh, and, and makes it a bit comfortable for people mm -hmm. to use um, mm -hmm. their computer. Another another one that is not, isn't necessarily a coating um, but it's an addition on the lenses it's called photochromic uh, photochromatic lenses and what it does is that um, it usually tints when you're outside mm -hmm. you know during the day mm -hmm. and then when you're indoors it's clear so that uh, it usually tints because of the exposure from um, uh, UV rays from the okay. Sun and it's meant to help people with photosensitivity people who are affected a lot by light mm -hmm. um, to just make it a bit easier for them so that's why it tints when you're outside and then it's clear when you're indoors. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, blue light blocking lenses that are supposed to help filter out the blue light that is emitted by screens, phones, TVs, um, computers. Um, again, for people who are now using computers for like long hours um, in a day, uh, it filters out that blue light and makes it more comfortable to use the computer. All right, and how do I know the, like the, uh, which lens material to choose? Or to go for that one now is according to the advice given you by your eye care professional. Oh, sister, so, so, see so, uh, to uh, over the counter to a channel. A uh, channel uh, over the counter. A <laughs> <laughs> channel over the counter, Kabisa. <laughs> All right, so when you look at the, let's go back, let me take you back to yeah. now the business aspect of it now. Uh, okay, so here I am. I am, I, I am ready to get into the eyewear industry. So I have my finances in order. And uh, I know my target audience as well. So where to start from when it comes to getting your products? Right. Um, this is basically me giving <laughs> some <laughs> secrets, I feel like. OK. Um, so you have to identify your suppliers, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the suppliers that you need in this case, you need someone to supply you with the frames. Mm -hmm. And you need someone to supply you with the lenses. Okay. Right. I am not going to name names. <laughs> I, was I am not going to name lens. names. I have but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you need somewhere. You need to find a place where you can source your frames uh -huh. and your lenses. Okay. Um, if you're lucky, you mm -hmm. might actually find uh, a place where you can source both both frames and the lenses, which is a bit rare. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's where you start. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, of course, you you compare between several suppliers depending on your target audience and how much you want to charge for your uh, for your glasses mm -hmm. but that's basically where you start what would you say how did you guys cut a niche for yourselves um, when we started at uh, at La Pere, we were doing a mobile clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our thing. Like we would go to companies, we would go to schools, uh, anywhere where there was a gathering of people, and uh, we would conduct the free vision test on site. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to move around with the machines that we were using, with the frames that people could select from, mm -hmm. and that was it. So we would test people, uh, make the glasses for them, and deliver back to where we tested them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how we started off. Um, but then, of course, that model of doing business had its own challenges. So we moved on to the drive to store model, which is where we are at the moment. And, uh, you know, we, that's why we're opening more and more stores to be able to, act, to reach uh, different people, to come closer to the people um, so that they don't have to go more than 30 minutes to get the eye care that they need. Uh, for how long have you been in existence and how many are where you guys located? 
Right. Um, La Pair was formed in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're turning uh, four this year. Yay. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the locations that we have in Kenya, in Nairobi currently we have uh, three branches. We have a branch in Westlands on Raptor Road. Mm -hmm. We have another branch in um, uh, CBD on Banda Street, just opposite Nation Center. And then we have another branch in Roisambu um, along Kamiti Road, just near TRM. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Okay, you know, on a broader spectrum now, uh, when it comes to any business from different industry, uh, from where you're seated, at what particular point as a business owner or someone who's running a business, I identify that it's time for, for growth, for us to expand and open different branches. Because I feel like it can also be a, a, a sort of fear of the unknown. There could be a fear of unknown for any person who's running a business because you don't know what will happen. Things are going well right now where yeah. we are, but I feel it's time for expansion. I am not sure. So at what particular point do we know that it's time to move and actually uh, expand on our wings to just grow? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's always that fear, mm -hmm. you know, the fear of the unknown, because you don't know if you open all these branches, they're actually going to perform well. Uh, but at some point, you have to take a risk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to take a risk and decide on what you want. Um, do you want to maintain your one store where you're seeing, you know, uh, I don't know, like 30 customers a day and uh, or something like that, or do you want to go for something more? And it also depends on sort of the, 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 the mission of the company as well. Of course, the finances have to back it up. Like, um, you need to make sure that you have uh, the finances that you need to be able to expand, right? Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, it also depends on the, the core mission of the company. And for us, it's to make eyeglasses accessible to everyone um, in Africa. Um, and that's why we decided on expanding. And and because we know um, that the kind of product that we're offering is a product that is desperately needed by the people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's, that's sort of where we started. We started on uh, understanding, first of all, what we want to offer, uh, backed it up with the finances, mm -hmm. and then uh, we took the risk. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are a couple of challenges that one should expect when starting off? Challenges? Yes. Right. Awareness, mm -hmm. especially in the eye care industry. Um, there is a, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of awareness on eyes, on vision, on sight, on all that, um, that is currently not enough. There's still those you know, uh, misconceptions about eye care, people not wanting, uh, intentionally not wanting to seek eye care because they think, ah, if I go there, they're just going to prescribe me glasses. But maybe that's what you need. Maybe mm -hmm. you need glasses to be able to help you see better. So at the moment, I would say it's, a, it's awareness, awareness yeah, yes. on uh, eye care. Okay, move, uh, what about the brand awareness perspective? Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure, uh -huh. that is also... Uh, part of it, yeah? It's also part of it. Um, okay. and, and when you start, especially starting up in an industry that is uh, as saturated as the, the eye care industry in Kenya, there's so many optical shops, so many uh, different brands that are offering pretty much the same service that we're offering. So to penetrate that market and become known and for people to, for your customers to actually trust you enough that they can refer other people and they can come back, uh, it takes a lot. All right. Yeah. Just a run-up now. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the costs involved in opening, let's say, a, 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 like a glasses store now? Yes, I already found, I found my, my person who's going to give me the, <laughs> the lens, my... Right. Yeah, so my supplier. I already got him. So let's run the cost of everything. Like, what are the costs involved in opening, like, now a glass store now? Uh, no, a store. Yeah. Right. A so, store. Uh, um, of course, you have to find the perfect location, um, somewhere where your customers will be able to see, uh, to access you. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to find the perfect location and then identify a shop. Mm -hmm. So uh, it starts with, of course, paying the rent. <laughs> uh, it starts with paying the rent and then um, you have your, uh, the machines that you're using for the checkup. Um, those are very important because they are the core of the business. Um, and then after that, now you have to make sure that you have a team. You have um, an optometrist, someone who's going to be doing the checkups in your store. Uh, you have uh, a few salespeople, customer service representatives. Um, and then, yeah, you start setting up your shop. You buy your furniture, of course, depending on the kind of you know, aesthetics you want for your shop. Um, yeah, so you get, uh, you get your location, you get your team, you get your machines, um, you set up the shop. Right. Yeah. So, um, Let's look at different ways you can make uh, the business more profitable. 
I know we've looked into the aspect of marketing and uh, also from an angle of awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, just to increase on the leads now that results into sales, right? So what are the couple of ways that we can uh, take up just to, uh, to be more profitable? Okay. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier uh, about digital advertising. Oh, okay. um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's something that is uh, well quite popular now in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a lot of people using social media and they're exposed to all kinds of information. So why not throw your, yourself in there, you know, um, inform people about what you're doing. Try to boost some of your posts that you do online to be able to reach even a wider audience. Um, that's the first thing. The other thing um, is, of course, offering a good service because when you offer a good service, then you get repeat customers. You get uh, customers referring you um, to their friends and family members. Uh, referrals. Exactly, uh, referrals. Yes. Yeah, uh, word of mouth referrals. Very, very helpful in any business. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And then, yeah. Other than that, the other thing is uh, forming partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, partnerships are, you know, a very core, uh, a very important, uh, you know, aspect of business because. Um, then uh, if you can set the perfect partnership uh, of a sort of um a win-win situation um, with companies, with NGOs, with schools, uh, where they send their people to you, uh, and then you know you offer something in return. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's where you get most of your leads. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> no, you got it. You've given us a secret. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid so. I am afraid so. <laughs> so um, let's look at. Uh, so you can actually assure us that you know the I, uh, the eyewear uh, venture sector it's actually profitable. It is. Just depends on how you run your business, but it is profitable. Okay, yes. so let's look at a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way when working with uh, uh, Lapia East Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, right, some of the financial lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, give us top, uh, let's go with top three. Top three? Yes. Wow, I thought I only had to give the one. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to finance, oh boy, I'm I'm really trying my best here to come up with like something let's that go, is let's go with whatever comes. Whatever comes yeah. to mind. Yes. Okay. Well, when it comes to finance, it's very good to have a budget okay. and try as much as possible to stick to your budget. Mm -hmm. um, you're always, um, as anyone, you're always tempted to uh, go big um, if you have the money, or if you don't have the money, try to compromise on a few things. But it's important not to compromise, when it comes to finance, to com not to compromise on the things that are important. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, it's important to make sure that uh, you're not compromising on the service that you're offering to your customers just because of the finances. I think that's uh, probably what I can say about finance now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So quality is also quite important. It's really important. Mm -hmm. It's really important. All yeah. right. As you wind up, do you believe in uh, any person who wants to start a business to have a business plan? I've had a conversation with a couple of uh, uh, entrepreneurs who say that they started, they didn't have a business plan, but things just, you know, uh, flowed along the way for them. So I just wanted to get it from your perspective. Right. Yeah. Hey, look, it's good to have a business <laughs> plan. It's good to have a business plan. Mm -hmm. um, you can really plan all you want, but personally, I just believe in diving in mm -hmm. and learning as you go. But that's me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, uh, you know, evidence that would back up business plans. So I'm not saying that they're not good. They're definitely good. So mm -hmm. do a business plan, understand what you're offering. Mm -hmm. uh, but for, for me, I kind of just dive in and, uh, and I learn as I move on. All right. Yes. So, uh, Rosaline, earlier on you mentioned one of the ways that you, uh, you can increase uh, uh, the aspect of leads and profitability in a business is through collaboration, right? right. Yeah. Give us one tip when it comes to negotiation. Make sure you're winning. <laughs> Make sure, sure you're winning. winning. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's the biggest all? thing. I was expecting, <laughs> I, expecting I, a I lot, knew. something super detailed. Yeah. Uh, what I had mentioned earlier is the, the kind of partnership. So anyone who is getting uh, into yes. a partnership, they yes. want to 
have the upper hand. They, have, they want to make sure that they're, they're, they're getting something Thank out of you. it, right? Um, and there's a, lot, there's a lot of compromise, of course, but at the end of the day, you don't want to enter into something that's not going to be profitable for you. You want something that is um, actually has potential and is going to, to benefit your business. And that's why I said, make sure that you're winning. Make sure that you're winning. Yes. Yeah. So it falls back onto you and I yeah. to go back to the strategy and come up with a strategy. Pretty much, yes. Make sure that you're winning. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rosalind, for creating time to be with us. Thank you. All right. And if, if anyone who is watching this conversation and they want to reach out to you, or even the, the, uh, to work with you in any, in any way, just to get further uh, information, how can they reach out to you? Right. Um, you can reach out to me through my phone number, um, okay. which is uh, 0701. Uh, three one one seven eight six mm -hmm. uh, zero seven zero one three one one seven eight six. Right. Um, through that, uh, we'll be able to talk. Okay. Yes. Uh, website, social media. Right. So uh, the Lapea social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's Lapea dot ke. Mm -hmm. um, Lapea dot ke. You'll be able to go there, see the kind of services that we're offering, and chat with a representative from Lapea. Um, our website is www dot Lapea glasses um, dot com. Uh, Lapea is spelled L A P A. I R E because yes. I know people usually have a problem with spelling um, the the word. Yeah. Okay, and the location is. Oh, I think that is also important. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, locations mm -hmm. um, in Nairobi. We are based in. Uh, we have a, a branch in Westlands on Raptor Road, SK offices, um, and then we have another branch um, in Nairobi CBD, just um, opposite Nation Center on Banda Street, and the third location um, is on Kamiti Road, Royal Plaza. Um, um, just near the uh, quick mat in Rosambo. All right, thank you very much, Rosalind, for creating time to be with us once again. Thank you. All right, so that's Rosalind Kilonzo. She is the expansion manager for La Pea East Africa. We were looking at what it takes when it comes to running an eyewear venture. Remember to keep the conversation going at y 2 channel is where you can find us across all our social. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across my social. Be right back with so much right here on Entrepreneurship Tuesday. <laughs>